Hey guys, it's your girl Fuzz and welcome back to another Saji Valley video. As you can see, I'm trialing out a new angle on life. As you can see, I'm standing. And this has been one of the most popular requests of videos and it's everything that you need to know about ponds. Let's get into it. So let's start off with the basics about buying yourself your first pond. You'll need to go to Robin at the carpenter shop to buy your ponds out. It will cost you 5,000 gold, 200 stone, 5 seaweed and 5 green algae. Placing this on your farm will take a 5x5 five five tile placing so be sure that you have enough room for it. If you need yourself some more seaweed, you can find these by fishing in the ocean, foraging by the tide pools by the beach, finding them in garbage cans all around Pelican Town and some fish in the ponds will produce them. If you need yourself some green algae instead, you can go fishing by some fresh water such as at Sinisat Forest or in town. Killing a green slime has a 10% chance to drop them and some fishes on your farm when in a pond will produce some green algae. The main use of a pond is to hold and raise yourself some fishes on your farm. These will also include fishes that you catch at the night market between the 15th and the 17th of winter, crab pot fishes that you get in crab ponds and beach forageables such as sea urchins. Some fishes will produce you their own type of row and may produce you some items. Fish ponds will have a max capacity of up to 10 fishes of any one of the same fish, meaning you can't put different types of fishes in one pond. After throwing your fish in the pond, it will tell you how much limit it has before it expands to have more space. And you can either be patient and wait for the fishes in that pond to breed for some more of that same fish, or you can go out and fish for that same fish to throw it into the pond so it reaches its max limit, so you can grow it even more. However, the only fish that doesn't have a limit before getting to the 10 fish limit is tiger trout. You'll actually need to go out and collect more tiger trout to fill in the pond for the 10 max limit. Fishes can be harvested in these ponds, meaning at any time of their breeding process, you can just throw your fishing line in and no mini game is required to collect that fish. You can either use that fish for yourself for recipes or you can toss it in the shipping bin to make you some money. Just be sure to note that when you are fishing in these ponds for fishes to keep at least one of that fish in the pond. Otherwise the breeding process won't continue if all the fish are removed. Give that pond some time and they should breed you another fish in there to continue the breeding process. However, at any point, if there is a pond full of fish and you want to replace that pond with different fishes, there is an option within the pond that you can click to empty out the fish pond and replace it with any other fish of your liking. The standard capacity a fish will have when being thrown into the pond is a 3 maximum capacity, while some rare fishes start at 1, plus tiger trout, sea urchins and coral will start at 10. However, a nice little tip as well, if the fish pond has expanded their capacity to 10 fishes and that pond is full, you can collect a few fish, sell them for yourselves and wait a few days for the breeding process to start again. For the fish ponds that are full at that 3 max capacity, after a few days you should see an exclamation mark on that pond. Interacting with that pond will have the fishes request something so they can expand their max capacity even further. Only a few fishes require this twice in their growing process but most fishes will require 3 to 4 items during their expansion. When that item to expand that max capacity is thrown in, you should see now that the pond has some room for more fishes. And once again, you can either wait for the breeding process or go out and fish for that fish again to throw it in there for their max capacity so they can offer an expansion again in a few days time. All of these fishes will produce you row and the pricing of that row when sold is dependent on the value of the fish that is in there. You can either straight up sell this row, use it for yourself if you want it for health and for energy, or the best way to use that row is to put it in a preserved jar to turn it into age row. Preserving the row into age row will double the value of that row when selling it. However, there is only one fish that doesn't produce age row and that is sturgeon. Sturgeon row when put into a preserved jar will actually turn into caviar. And you can either sell this or use this in your gameplay. Fishes, however, do have a chance to give you items instead of row on the daily basis. It is determined every morning if that fish pond will produce you row or an item. That would mean that some fishes are better than others because of the row and the items that they drop. Now determining which fish is best for your pond is really dependent on what you're looking for. I will mention the 10 best row prices that you can sell to make you some money on your farm. And for the second one, it is the 10 best fish that I would suggest for the items that they produce you. Let's start off with the best 10 row that you can sell to make you some profit on your farm. And this is prior to the artisan level at level 10 of farming. 
that increases the pricing of your artisan goods by 40%. At number 10, we have Stingray Row, which will sell for 120 gold when sold by itself, or when you age it, it sells for 240 gold. Number 9 is Pufferfish for 130 gold, or when aging it, it is 260 gold. For number 8, we have Catfish, which is 130 gold, or 260 when turning to age row. Number 7 is Spookfish, which is 140 gold, or 280 when turning to age row. Number 6 is Super Cucumber, that sells for 155 gold, or 310 when turning to age row. Number 5 is Stonefish, which sells for 180 gold, or 360 gold when turning to age row. Number 4 is Surgeon Robe, which sells for 130 gold, but when turning to caviar, it sells for 500 gold. Number 3 is Blobfish, which sells for 280 gold or 560 when turned into age row. Number 2 is the Ice Paper Row, which sells for 280 gold or 560 gold when turned into age row. And the number 1 fish for the most gold that a row sells is the Lava Eel at 380 gold or 760 when turned into age row. Now for my list of the 10 best fishes that I can suggest for the items that they produce. Now before we get into this, this list of fishes that I suggest are those that I feel like have benefited my game plays. I don't really have a particular order I'm putting them through. However, I am scaling them on the amount of things that they produce and how useful I have found them in my gameplay. These are very dependent on your play style, so if you don't agree, you're more than welcome to let me know in the comments down below. Starting at number 10, I would suggest using a pond for ghost fish. They have a chance to produce you row, 1 to 3 quads, a 5% chance to produce you 5 white algae, a 4% chance to produce you 1 refined quads, and an under 2% chance to produce you 3 pale broth. At number 9, I would suggest a wood skip fish. They have a chance to produce you row, 1 to 10 wood, 5 hardwood, 1 to 5 acorns, 1 to 5 maple seeds, or 1 to 5 pine cone. Number 8 is the rainbow trout fish. They have a chance to produce you row, a rainbow shell, and an under 1% chance to produce you a prismatic shard. In one of my late game playthroughs, I've actually had them produce 4 to 5 prismatic shards, so there is a chance that it could drop. Number 7 is the stonefish. It has a chance to produce you row, an under 10% chance of 5 copper ore, roughly a 15% chance to drop you 1 to 5 geodes, roughly a 7% chance to give you 30 stone, and below a 1% chance to give you 1 diamond. Number 6 is the Ice Pit Fish. They have a chance to produce you row, just under a 10% chance to give you 5 iron ore, around a 5% chance to give you 1 to 5 frozen geodes, around a 7% chance to drop you 5 frozen tears, and below a 1% chance to give you a diamond. Number 5 is the Blobfish. They have a chance to give you 1 to 2 row, a 2% chance to give you 1 pearl, and a 2% chance to produce you 5 warp totems to your farm. Number 4 is the Super Cucumber. They have a chance to give you row, a 5% chance for 1 to 3 Iridium Ore, and a 5% chance to get you 1 to 3 Amethysts. Number 3 is an Octopus, which has a chance to drop you row, and roughly a 15% chance to get you 1 to 10 Omni Geodes. Number 2 is the Lava Eel, which has a chance to give you 1 to 3 row, an under 10% chance to get you 5 gold ore, roughly a 4% chance to get you 5 spicy eels, and an under 5% chance to give you 5 to 10 magma geodes. And my all time favorite fish, which is our number one spot for this list, that is the Stingray Fish. It has a chance to either drop you a row, an under 5% chance to give you a magma cap, an under 10% chance to give you 2 to 5 cinder shards, around a 5% chance to give you a dragon tooth, and a 10% chance to drop you a battery. In one of my late game playthroughs, I have 4 to 5 ponds with stingrays in it. Not only is it giving me items that I can use for Ginger Island, but it also may have a chance to give me a battery pack which I can use for more Crystallariums, which is one of my all time favorite machines in Stargear. This is all a lot of information and I hope you've learned something about fish ponds. If you liked today's video, a like will be greatly appreciated and if you want to see more videos, why not consider subscribing because I upload weekly. I hope to see you next time, I'll be heading down downstairs. Take care.